Hi guys, my name's uh, Doug uh, from BudgetAstro.net. Uh, BudgetAstro.net is my website. We should be up and running soon, uh, within a week or so, I'm hoping. Uh, we're a blog format, not a proper website, but uh, it will do for now. Um, so yeah, keep uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, now this is a, a quick tutorial, well not quick, none of my tutorials are quick. Uh, it's a tutorial on um, adding a luminance layer to your images. Um, I don't know if you've heard of that, luminance layers, but uh, what you're looking at on screen at the moment is what they call an RGB image, red, green and blue, made up of three colour channels, RGB, and that's what you get off your, your average sort of DSLR camera. Um, a luminance layer is uh, adding um, uh, another layer, an additional layer to the RGB, um, which uh, luminance is the, is the lightness, if you like, in an image, the uh, dark and light, the bit that the uh, uh, the darkness and lightness the UI picks up, and that's more important, believe it or not, than the colour. Your eye is more sensitive to sort of light and light and dark than it is to uh, is to colour. And uh, so, adding a luminance layer, you're boosting the light and dark areas in the image, and uh, and it gives the whole image a, a sort of a boost. Um, an image, an RGB image with a luminance layer added, is generally referred to as an LRGB image. Um, but what I'm going to show you is what uh, purists would probably call uh, adding a false luminance layer. Although I can't see the difference, to be honest. Generally, luminance layers are the preserve, if you like, of uh, people that use um, CCD cameras and uh, filters, RGB, red, green and blue filters and things like that, very expensive kit. Um, and they take a luminance layer by not using a filter, uh, just using the uh, CCD camera, which is generally mono, black and white. And uh, the luminance layer tends to be longer exposures or a longer total exposure than the RGB images, uh, and that's how they get an LRGB. So when I add uh, what's called a false luminance layer to my images, which is what I'm about to do now, I don't refer to it as an LRGB. I still just refer to it as an image, basically. I don't call it anything, to be perfectly honest. Okay, now the image you can see on the screen is a JPEG. Um, that's an image of M42 in the Orion Nebula that I took fairly recently. For those in the UK, by the way, thought I just mentioned this, this image was featured on Stargazing Live recently, which I'm rather pleased with. Um, so yeah, it's a nice one. It's only 60 second exposures, this image as well, by the way, so you can, you can get uh, quite a, a fair bit of detail with uh, 60 second exposures. You have to do a lot of them, um, but uh, you don't have to uh, do great big long exposures in order to get detail in your images. Now, as I said, this is a JPEG. Now, you wouldn't uh, generally do this with a JPEG, because if you do, um, you're going to save a new image and you're going to be saving a JPEG as a JPEG and I think I've mentioned before if you do that it degrades the quality of the image anyway you would actually perform this step if you're going to do it whilst you're doing your main processing whilst you're still working on your TIFF rather than doing it with uh, you know, do, doing it with your JPEG but I'm sure I'm doing it on a JPEG just, just for ease and just to show you um, how to do it OK we've got our image on screen the first thing we need to do is duplicate the image go to image duplicate uh, don't worry about what it's called it doesn't matter click on OK and I'll produce a copy of the image. Copy to, auto save to copy, and that's the original image. And if you click between them, there's no difference. As you'd expect. Now, if you go down to the layer uh, panel here, uh, you can see it's background layer. Um, if you were actually duplicating your TIFF image, you may have several layers there. So the first thing you'd need to do is flatten the image in order for this to work. So go up to uh, layer. Flatten image, that's disabled at the moment because I've only got the background layer so I can't flatten the image anymore. But if there were several layers that would be enabled and I click on that and that would flatten the image just down to the background layer which is what we want. Okay, so make sure you've got uh, just the background layer there and uh, you're working on your copy. First thing we need to do is go up to image, mode and select lab colour. RGB is ticked at the moment which is what you'd expect but it's click on lab colour and that's done. No change to the image, no change to the layers. Now, if you click on the Channels tab uh, in Lab Color, you'll see the first one is Lab, then Lightness, then A, and then B. Uh, and those of you that are switched on will realize that uh, Lab stands for L for Lightness, A for the A channel, and B for the B channel. Now, click on the uh, eyeballs uh, for the A and the B channels, and that just leaves the lightness um, visible. And if you look at the image, you can see it's uh, monochrome, black and white, uh, and it's just the light and dark areas of the image. Uh, and that's the lightness channel, and that's what we want, that's what we're going to work with. Now if you just make the A channel visible for a second, click on the A, uh, the eyeball next to the A channel, and then uh, click on the eyeball next to the lightness channel, and that's just the A channel visible now. A channel is uh, green and magenta, apparently, but if you look at the image, there's hardly any information in there at all. Um, and equally with the B channel, click on the B channel, make the A channel invisible, and again, hardly any information at all, and that demonstrates that the vast majority of the image uh, is made up of uh, the luminance, the lightness channel.
I find that quite amazing, really. I was quite amazed when I discovered that. B, by the way, is uh, blue and yellow. A is green and magenta, and uh, B is, uh, B is uh, blue and yellow, for those who wanted to know. Okay, so we're going to make the luminance channel visible. So untick the uh, B one, uh, click on the uh, blue box where it says lightness, click on that just to make that uh, uh, the one that's highlighted. Uh, and then do Control A, that selects it all, and then Control C to copy it. Now having copied it, we go back to our original image, which is still in RGB if you remember. Uh, and what you'll notice straight away is that the channels uh, tab is now visible. I don't know why that is. Uh, we copied the image and then made the channels visible in the copy, and it also makes the channels visible in the uh, original image for some reason. I don't know why. Um, click on the Layers tab. We've just got a background image, and then do Control V to paste. And that pastes a new layer in, as you can see, and it's the uh, the channel that we just copied. Now, because the um, blending mode is set to normal, uh, the uh, the top layer is all you can see at the moment. Uh, so I'm going to change the blending mode to uh, luminosity, which is the bottom one in the blending mode. There, click on that, and this is the magic. There you go. Look at the image now. Okay. Now, if I click on the eyeball next to the uh, luminance layer, which is what we've just added, we've added a luminance layer. Click it on and off, and you can see the difference on off on it just makes the whole thing brighter gives you a bit of a boost um, and that's what we're trying to achieve here now we can adjust the opacity of the luminous layer as well up here uh, and i think that's a bit too much at the moment it gives it a bit too much of a boost so i'm going to reduce the opacity down to about 70 percent whatabouts there you go um, and then click on the eyeball again on and off and that's a bit more of a, a bit less in your face so to speak now something else you may have noticed, uh, if you look at the central area of the uh, of the nebula here, and I'm going to click it on and off again, off, on, it makes that brighter, but it makes it a bit too bright, it loses a bit of the detail around here. Um, so what we can also do, we can add a layer mask, and you can do that with any adjustments you make in layers. Uh, click on the white circle down here, if you remember. Uh, I must do a video on layer masking, I haven't done it yet. Uh, click on that white circle, and that adds a mask to the, uh, to the luminous layer, as you can see down here. So to tone that central area down a little bit, make sure that your layer mask is selected. It's got a, a black box around it, so you'll be nice selected. And then click on your paintbrush tool, which is, where is it? There it is. Okay, that's your paintbrush tool. Uh, make sure your foreground colour is black down here, set to black. And your opacity is sort of near the top, 96%, that's fine. And now I'm just going to paint over uh, the central area. Now bear in mind, when we've got the, uh, uh, the layer mask selected, this doesn't paint on the image, this paints on the, on the actual layer mask itself. So I'm just going to paint over that, like that. And if you look at the layer mask, you can see the black blob I've just painted. Now if you look at the stars uh, in this image, I'm going to turn the luminous layer on and off. Uh, and you can see the stars, probably a little bit too bright now, the, the sort of halo around the stars is too bright. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to put the layer mask in there as well and just uh, turn them down a little bit. And as I paint over them, you can see them hopefully getting a little bit duller. Okay, that should do it. And that's added another blob to the layer mask. Now, what else I like to do with these things? If you do Alt and then click, that makes the layer mask visible. Uh, and I go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, Gaussian Blur, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and that's set as 24.2 pixels. And if you click on Preview, on and off, you'll see it's uh, just made it a little bit more blurry than the edges. Makes it a little bit more natural so you don't get this uh, sudden change in the, uh, in the image. Click on OK. Make the... Uh, image itself visible again. There you go. Now if I click on the uh, luminance layer eyeball, just to turn it on and off, if you have a look at the image, particularly these areas around here, well let's get the arrow key back again, uh, these, are, these areas around here, the fainter areas, if I turn the uh, luminance layer off, that's quite faint, luminance layer on, and they're brighter. So if you look at the fainter areas of the image all around the outside, turn it on and off, you can see it's boosted that, but now the stars down here look the same, because I've masked them, and the centre of the image looks the same as well if I turn it on and off, off, on, centre of the image hasn't changed. Just the faint areas around the outside have got brighter. And there you go. So all you need to do is save the image from here, uh, flatten the image if you want, and then save it as a JPEG. I know it's already a JPEG, but you wouldn't be doing it as a JPEG. Um, and you're sorted. Okay guys, uh, I hope you found that useful, adding a luminance layer. Um, doesn't always work, I hasten to add. I mean, the best thing to do when you're uh, processing an image is give it a try, if you want to, see what you end up with. If it makes a difference and it looks better, that's the, the whole idea, to make it look nice. And if it looks nice to you, then that's fine. Um, give it a go, but uh, you, you know you don't have to use this this uh, technique. Uh, but it works well on this image, I think. Uh, and you may find it uh, useful when you're, when you're processing. Alright guys, um, as I say, I hope you found that useful. And I shall uh, 
Hopefully speak to you again soon.